Yeah, it's custom. Whoa. Boop. <laughs> Hey guys, we got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, one of the things is trying to figure out how to get rid of a bunch of motorcycles. Not really, but we've got a lot of bikes in here right now, especially these sidecar style bikes, they're too big. Anyway, uh, let's go see what's going on in the workshop. Alec. Yo. The internet was surprised to learn that you're a bass player for, for that kick-ass band. Who was? The internet. Oh. The whole internet was super surprised. The entire internet. The entire internet. Talk to me about what you're working on. I'm working on a 1953 Aerial Square 4. Fun fact, this is actually the first Aerial I've ever worked on. Found out a lot of cool information about it. The reason why it came in is to obviously fix things or replace things as needed, but as far as the way it looks and everything, just kind of keep it as is, but make it running and rideable. So, you know, it was a ri revival special, as we like to call them. It's been sitting for a very long time. The client wants to enjoy it, really. And I got it running. My biggest surprise about this thing is I had no idea they sounded the way they do. It sounds like a Japanese, like a like a Japanese, like sounds a sounds like a CB 750. Like a CB 750. Yeah. I was like, what? It sounds like this. I just had no idea. So the crazy part is that the guy who designed it designed it in like the 30s, and presented it to BSA, and BSA turned it all down. He was just he designed a motor looking for work essentially. Um, BSA turned him down and uh, you know, ultimately Ariel picked it up and Ariel started building the bike. There was an earlier version of this thing, had a lot of overheating problems with the rear cylinders. And so this is the second iteration of it. This is what they call the Mark II. So you've got four pipes, two on each side. But essentially you've got two vertical twins like this, two separate crankshafts that operate into one another essentially. So they oppose one another. There's just a common gear. That, that meshes together. And yeah, they sound like an inline four cylinder. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It runs pretty well. It sounds really good. But I haven't been able to ride it yet because oh, really? I have to rebuild the petcock. And the way that these carburetors are built is the outlet for the petcock is on the bottom. Usually, like if you just want to like check something out and get it running, put it on a fuel bottle, then you can pull it off and kind of ride it up and down the parking oh, lot a little bit, shift through gears. But this one, as soon as you remove the fuel just line, it just out. dumps it's right out. out. So old school monobloc ammo carb. Just a little velocity stack, no air filter. Yeah, and that's points. not an original carb either. Yeah, points and distributor. The weird part is the compression's not very high, so when you kick these things over, they're nothing oh, really it's to nothing. kick. That's cool. Um, my my experience with the bikes is that they are heavy feeling. I don't know if you've noticed even pushing it around. It feels this one actually feels okay because I think at the center of gravity is uh, a lot lower. I just feel like they feel like they weigh more than they do. This thing only weighs 425 pounds, which is less than a CB750, right? Oh yeah, those but are the it, heaviest things in the world. But, right, yeah, so it's it's nice. Even with the plunger, you know, that's not a very uh, weight-saving way to do your rear suspension. And do you and guess how fast this thing will go? Mm, well, is it one of those things like, this bike will do 100? If it's tuned correctly, this motorcycle will go 100 miles an hour. Yeah. Which is, you know, from the 50s. Yeah, it's a lot. Kinda, that's a big deal. Horn works. Yeah, it's really loud kinda. too. Yeah, the, all the wiring up, up under here that was like for the gauge and the ignition switch, it was all speaker wire. So somebody had done that up nicely in the past, <laughs> which is actually, it's pretty common. Like if you're gonna wire a bike or a car or anything for that matter, don't use speaker wire. It's for speakers, not a bike. I'm just thinking about, I'm looking at this bike and remembering if this thing was going 100, I mean, the brakes on it are a joke. They don't do very much at all. They're, they're really kind of in a suggestion of yeah, brakes. Yeah, it's the scariest thing. I love that you've got the car looking distributor over here hanging out. Yeah. Cool, cool bike. Yeah, um, it is these cool. aren't very many of these. So they only made 15,000 in total of the square fours. And I think this final version was their best selling version. But this bike, I think they sold 3,000 of the Mark II, maybe 3,500 of the four pipers. So that's it. This, this is one of 3,000, and who knows how many actually survived. The motor's beautiful. Yeah, I love it's the way a they beautiful sound. bike. I love this Moto Guzzi kicker on here. Yeah, it's custom. Whoa. Boop. <laughs> yeah, I guess they got it in the same um, box that they found the speaker wire in. <laughs> there was a Moto Guzzi parts and some speaker yeah, wire. Yeah, I got a speaker wire, a Moto Guzzi shifter, and a sandwich. What can we make out of it? I think you should ride this thing on camera. You should go talk about it. I will. I'll what do feels it when like I get back. When you get the petcock, when you get back, that's right. I love this. 1995. Probably the last, last time, time this around. thing was registered. <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave you alone. Okay guys, thanks for watching all of this. Hopefully we're gonna start teaching you more. Like, comment, subscribe, get your hands dirty. Mine are dirty.
Go make some stuff.